Yay, hello, hello, hello everyone. Are you guys having a good time? Are you hungry? Well, lunch is coming up, so stay tuned. Well, thank you for having me. I'm Kia. Today I'm going to talk about Vuex ORM, which is the plugin for Vuex, which I've been creating this year. And it's about relational data management in Vue. So obviously, you have heard previous uh, session from Natalia. Well, actually, you might need Vuex. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's find out. So <laughs> before going into the details, let me introduce myself a bit. So I'm Kia. I'm half American, half Japanese. I'm traveling from Japan. And do we have any Japanese audience here? Who's from Japan? Oh, I can see a couple. Oh, we're going to have good timing after party. And uh, <laughs> I see myself as an optimist web designer and developer, so I do both graphic design and also development. And on the development side, I mostly use everything, I create everything in Vue.js and Lalavel. And more precisely, I'm using Nux these days. And I'm working at a company called Growablane, which is a, one of the largest Japanese venture capital. So I think there are lots of startups joining in this event too. So if you need any funding, let me know. Maybe I can help. And I'll be happy to help any company that uses Vue. And I'm also a core staff at Japan, uh, Vue.js Japan user group, which is also the largest Vue.js community in Japan. So if you have any chance visiting Japan, let me know. We can bring you to a good place and we can have fun. OK, so let's get into the actual content. Today, I'm going to talk about three topics. One is what is VuexORM and why I created this VuexORM at the first place. And we're going to dive into the VuexORM and see what you can do. So the first topic, what is VuexORM? Well, have you ever heard this library? Who knows VuexORM? Ah, oh, this, that's more than I expected. Great, thank you. So it does two things. One, it normalizes the data, which means uh, I'm going to explain that in the following slides. And one more thing it does is it provides ORM-like access to Vuex store, which means that it has a very similar API to famous ORM libraries like Lullable Eloquent or Active Records in Ruby on Rails. So how does it look like? So it's an ORM. So you have to first define a model. In this example, you can see on the left side, we have a user model. On the right side, you have post model. And each model is defined as a class and extends the base model that's uh, exported from VxORM. And each model has to have a two fields. So one is a static entity. This is going to be the name of the mo model and namespace for the Vuex module. And the second, you have fields. So this is the schema of the model. So in this case, this user has ID, name, and post. And the key here is that you can define relationships to a model. So in this case, the user has a relationship to post with has many relationships. So user has many posts. And once you define your model, you have to register them to the database. What, to do that, import database from the VuexORM, create new database instance, and register your models through database.register. And you can register as many models as you want. And finally, you install this database instance to Vuex. And to do that, just create new Vuex store and pass Vuex ORM install method as a plugin option. Now you're ready to create, or you can use this Vuex ORM in your view component. To create data, let's say we want to create this data. This is a post object. Probably this is coming from your server side. So you fetch some post and you get this kind of JSON data, right? And this post, as you can see, has ID, user ID, and it has a title. But also, it has nested relationships. So it's showing that this post has, uh, belongs to relation to a user. To save this data, you don't have to do anything, but just import your model, just uh, the model you just have created, and call post.insert and pass in this data. When you do this, VuexORM is going to create a data inside Vuex store, but it looks like this. So now you can see there's a post and users as a top level. And remember, there was a nested user object. But now the users, uh, user are decoupled from post. So decoupling each relationship, in this case, post and user, is what I mean by normalizing data. And when you create data, you have to retrieve data afterwards. So to do that, it's the same way. You import post. From, the, uh, from somewhere. And if you want to some, get all the posts, you just call post.all. If you want to get all the posts with the filters, we have a 
Query Builder too, so you can do post query, where, title, hello world, and get. And also, you can load the relationship as well. So if you want to get all the posts with user, you can do post.query with user and get. So to wrap up, what is Vuex Sorum? It normalizes the data, and it provides ORM-like access to the Vuex store. So there are a lot more that this library can do, but before going into the details, I would like to talk a little bit about why I created this library at the first place. So I was trying to solve this single problem, which was same data in multiple places. Well, I, when I started creating Vue, and I was creating this single page application, and I had this problem where I have this exact same data in multiple locations, like I maybe one in the Vue component, maybe one in the Vue X. It was causing me a lot of trouble. And to illustrate that problem a little better, let's take a look at some example up here. So this is like super simple to-do app. It has like to-dos, and each to-do have its own title and the state that it's, whether it's completed or not. To build this application, first you have to fetch data from the server, right? So the server response might look like this. Maybe it's different on GraphQL, but as usual, less for API, you get this kind of a response. As you can see, it's super simple response. It contains only to-dos. There's no relationship whatsoever. So if this is what you re only need, I think it's enough. You can just fetch data and display it, and that's it. But let's add another feature here. So what if the to-do can have a signee? Now, each to-do have a signee. The first one is belonging to John, next one to the Jane, and last one to the John. So to build this one, now server response has to change too. Now, we have this assignee nested under to-do object, right? So it has title, done, but also assignee. And this is probably going to be a user object, and this is a relationship. So now to do has belongs to relationship to a user. But still, it's just a single list. So I think it's OK to just imp uh, fetch this data and display it and be done with it. But let's add another feature here. Now, we have user list alongside with to do list. Well, I don't know if this is the best UI for the to do app, but let's say it is. It Kind of, you know, easy to look through all the user and, and also the to-do list. It might be nice. Now it gets a little bit more complicated because now you have to fetch two APIs, right? One for the to-dos list, and this stays exact same as the before because you still need a signee nested under the to-do object because you have to display it on the to-do list, right? But also you have to fetch users, and now we have duplication. Well. These two objects are exact same user, but now we have in two separate locations, and this is going to cause many trouble. For instance, what if we want to edit this user inside user list? But if we do that, obviously, the user inside to-do list has to be updated too. But really, how can we do this, right? The only way we can do this is go through all the to-do list and check if there is a username is John, and if there is, then update it. But having this kind of data structure is, causes many troubles, which is, uh, one, it duplicated data is hard to update. Like I said, if you have exact same object in different places, it's going to be so hard to update them all. And one more thing is that nested data is hard to handle. So then non-nested data, obviously. So because you have to do the, all the re circular reference and such, and it's going to be very, very ugly, very fast. So what are we going to do? What can we do to fix this problem? Well, after thinking for a while, I came up with this idea to treat Vuex as a database. What I mean is, let's have a two separated list, but instead of having a signee nested on the to-do list, we just reference um, to-do and user as a foreign key. So if we can do this, we can store data like this, then to do is only going to reference the user. So when we update user, it should be automatically updated on to do list, right? The question was, is it okay to do this? I was so scared to implement this idea. It was easy to come up with that, this idea, but I wasn't sure if this was like front end way of doing, or is it view way of doing it, or view X ways of doing it. So I was kind of really scared to do this, and I was searching on the internet for the best practices and such, and I, find, I found this. This is the uh, Redux documentation, and for those who, do, who don't know Redux, Redux is kind of UX for React, 
And in this documentation, there are two sections called normalizing state shape and updating normalized shape data. So basically what it's saying is the exact same I was saying, that having duplication is bad, having the same object in multiple store is bad, so normalize the state. And even better, it has this quote. The recommended approach to managing relational or nested data in Redux store is to treat a portion of your store as if it were a database. Huh. Well, this is what I was talking about, right? And it was really nice to find this out because Redux is kind of best successor of Flux implementation out there, and that Redux is recommending this database stuff. Well, just because Redux is recommending it, it doesn't mean this is the only way to do it or this is the best way to do it, but it's kind of nice to have this backup from a library such big, right? And if you read through the doc, you can find this uh, section here, Redux ORM. Redux ORM, oh, sorry, Redux ORM. Redux ORM, do you get what I'm saying here? They have dedicated software for Redux to create this database stuff, right? So if there is Redux ORM, there gotta be Vuex ORM. And that was my first instinct. And I couldn't find any on the internet, I don't know why, but as an open source, software developer, if you can't find something that you're looking for, it's your responsibility to create one. <laughs> so there is. VuxRM. <laughs> and what's better? We now have sponsors that backing me up too, and I think few of them are here too. I can't find them, but thank you. And uh, <laughs> this is wonderful. So that was uh, background for the Vux, Vux ORM, why I created it. And uh, let's dive into Vux ORM a bit more. So there are lots of things we can do, and I don't have enough time to explain all the features here. So I'm going to focus on more fundamentals and how it looks like or feels like to use this library in your project. But I hope you can get some idea, some feeling. So let's start from the start. Uh, first, you have to define model. And as I explained before, you first have to need to uh, declare this entity. It's the name of the model. So VueXORM is just a bunch of helpers function, or it's, it's really a module for Vuex. So it's not, we're not trying to like, replace Vuex or anything. It's built on top of Vuex. So if you create a mo uh, user model, which name with users, the Vuex store state tree is going to look like this. By default, all Vuex ORM data is going to be stored under entities namespace. So we have entities and users, and all the data of the user is going to be under there, which means Vuex ORM will never touch your existing Vuex module or Vuex data, so it's safe to use in your own existing application, and you can still benefit with this library. So if you add more models, it's just going to add more keys. And for the fields, now, for this user model, it has ID and name and to-dos. And ID and name, we call this type attributes, which are not relationships. And we have several type attributes, like this string number, Boolean, UID. UID is going to create like a unique ID on the model if, when instantiating the models. So remember here, we have ID and name in the model, right? And if you try to create data that are missing some key, for example, if you are trying to create this uh, object with ID one, and if you use user.insert, it's going to automatically populate any missing key and fill the value with the default value. So the next one is in relationship attributes. So in this case, a user has relationships to to do. And with this uh, has many relationships. And we have a bunch of relationship types. So we have has one belongs to, has many, belongs to many, which is many to many relationships. And we, have, we even have polymorphic relationships, so you can do morph one, morph many. And if you ever use Lullabell Eloquent, this should look very familiar because, because I am the Lullabell uh, user as well, so I I'm borrowing many this idea from the Eloquent. And once you're done, you register models to database instance, you install the database to the Vuex. Now you can use it in the view component, but where and when? Let's look at that. So when creating data in view component, let's say you want to create this uh, user data. Now we have ID one user and name is John. And remember, user has many to-dos, so to-dos list is nested under the user. 
And probably, first you have to fetch data from the server, right? So that should be done maybe on the mounted hook. It could be created if you're using Next.js. It, it should be in the fetch hook. But at some point, you fetch your data from the server and then call the model method and insert the data. Now, again, VUXORM is just a wrapper for the VUX. So when you call user.insert, what it actually does is it dispatching the actions. So if you don't like cross syntax, you can dispatch action directly. If this is what you prefer, you can do it. You can also use map helpers to extract the method too. But in this example, I'm going to use a class, class method syntax, but it's up to you. You can choose what you want to do. And again, inside the Vuex store, if you create any nested data, we're going to front end out everything. We're going to decouple, deduplicate the data, and store separately on the Vuex, state, uh, Vuex store state. And now here, you can see that, remember, in this data object, the to-do didn't have foreign key. It didn't have user ID. But it's automatically populated for you, so you can be safe just insert server-side uh, data, and you still get the relationships working afterwards. And we have many different types of uh, creating methods. So we have insert, create, new. And this act a little bit differently, but I'm not, going to I'm not going through everything here. There's a good documentation, so if you're curious, you can check them out. To retrieve data from the view component, you use computed. Because, again, VXRM is just a module for Vuex. So when you want to reference any state inside Vuex, you would do that inside computed, right? Same goes here. When first you import user, you define computed as a user's method, you return user.all. So this, this is going to return a user as, a, as an array. And you can use that in template, for example, in the v4 loop. And in this case, we're just displaying a bunch of user's name. And we have a powerful query builder as well. So if you want to do something like where clause, you can do that. We have more advanced filters like or where. We have, uh, you can pass closure to the where and do some crazy stuff. Also, we have ordering, remitting, so you can sort the result. You can have offset the limit, so you can do the paging on the front end. We have aggregate method too, so you can count post or find the post that has like max like and such. To load relationship in Vuex component, it works same way. So if you want to fetch post, but also it's also, you just query it with with chain. So post.query with user and fast. And you can see that you can access that user as a nested property. To make it more easy to understand, when you call post query with user.get, you get this kind of object. Now, when you fetch your record, you're not actually getting this plain object. Because it's ORM, because we have class, all the result is wrapped with the model instance, which means you can define your method inside a model just like any other famous ORM library. In this case, we define a full name method in the user model, and it just concatenates uh, its first name and last name, and you can just use it in a template. This feels really nice because many times when you want to do this kind of stuff in the view component, you have to define computed property, but it was pretty hard to share that logic, right? How to share that computed property. But now you can define that in the model, so you can just magically use this uh, method. You can uh, write all the business logic in the model, and you can do, even, you can even call like API call and stuff. And also, updating the data in the view component works pretty much the same as insert. You just call user.update. And there are many syntax to update uh, model. You can pass where and data. You can also pass a closure to update many records at once. And also, deleting in the view component is also the same. So you just call user.delete, and it's going to be deleted. And it can take closure, too, so you can delete many records at once. And one more thing I want to talk about is composition API. So ViewXORM weren't going to work, with, uh, work great with Composition API because this is not really related only to the Vuex ORM, but when you create an application, you see this kind of syntax a lot, right? For most of the page component, you get this. So in the mounted hook, you call API, you fetch data, you insert the data, but also you have to bind the data to something. So you will either declare a data key and bind the result to the data, or you're going to store that on the Vuex and reference that Vuex store as a computed. But with compo uh, composition in API, you can write the same thing, something like this. So we have setup, and we have user model 
and we call user.use and passing the URL. Now, this is not something that is built into the VX ORM core right now, but it's pretty easy to implement. So in this case, I'm just um, defining this use method inside the user model, which does pretty much what it did before, right? So it declares computed, it's unmounted, unmount, it it's going to fetch data, and it's going to save it and return to users. Obviously, we need more like error handling or how to handle the pending state and such. But the point is, you can write this stuff outside of the component, and it's going to still work. Because the old syntax, this one's very hard to share this code. The only way we could do it is through mix-in, and it has its own limitations. So with Composition API, things are going to get much easier to look, I think. So that, uh, that was the like, fundamental feature of VuxOrm, ORM, but it has a lot more, too, like lifecycle fork. You can fork into any data creation or mutation deletion and do something else, like logging, or maybe you can notify another model to do something else, or fetch new data, or fetch additional data. And also, we have plugin system. So you can add plugins in to the Vuex ORM, which is pretty funny, because Vuex ORM is plugins for Vuex, but Vuex is also plugins for the view, so you have lots of plugins, but you can just add lots of plugins here. <laughs> and official plugins we have, so we have VueXRM Axios, so if you want to have integration with Axios and do with RESTful API, that's good. Even better, we have GraphQL plugin as well, so it has its own caching system, and I don't think we're using Apollo, that local state that Natalia was talking about, but I think it's possible to do it, and still get benefit from this ORM syntax that may, you might like. And there are a lot more you can do with Vuex ORM, but it's not much time, so I have to finish now. But we have a Slack channel, and we have three big active users. So if you liked anything that I said today, please check out the GitHub repo. You can just search Vuex ORM, and it's going to be a top on the list. And if you want to discuss something, join on Slack. And also, I will be at After Party, too, so please find me. And if you have any question, if you want to just say hello, I'll, I'll be more than happy to talk with you guys. So that was it. Thank you so much. <laughs>